um, I've created a super cute little baby girl folio and I wanted to show it to you and then immediately following the walkthrough there will be the tutorial. So I've created it using the Hello Baby um, 6x6 paper pack from La La Land Crafts. Really, really cute. I also use several um, stamps and dies and all of that stuff is going to be linked below. It's way too many for me to show them all to you. I do feature some of them in the video, but they will all be linked below so you can go grab those. Um, so I did use the Hello Baby for this. It is a six and a half by four and a half inch folio with a two inch spine. So really, really beautiful paper. So vintage and pretty. It has boy and girl papers in it. Um, so I've done the spine and the back and this is the front. So here's the little baby from the stamp set that I used and then the welcome baby um, die cut and then this octagon here. It's also from La La Crafts, but it's from one of the club kits. So I'll link the club below as well. And then I've used the long flags back here. I tried to keep the cover pretty simple because it is going to be opened and the album will be laying on top of it. So I just used a simple seam binding closure. So let's open it up. It does open in this direction. So when we open it up, this is what it looks like. Trying to see if I'm all the way in camera here. Bring it up a little bit. All right, so that is what it looks like when we open it up. All right, so we've got, um, I'll kind of just show it to you top, top to bottom. Um, so here I've created a large pocket using one of the pocket dies. And um, then I've uh, also layered on top of it. So the flap opens up like this. And you can put photos back here. All the white spaces I left for photos. Um, this is the only paper in the book that's not from the Hello Baby collection. It's, all, it's actually from the Spring collection, um, which is on pre-order now. I'll link it below, but it is pre-order. So this closes like this and then it folds back on itself like this and then you open it here and here again lots of spaces for those beautiful baby pictures and then this one here has a cute little pocket for the camera die and you can use the back of the camera die for photos as well for smaller photos and then it just kind of tucks over like that then it opens again and you've got the cute little um, shoe die here and the circle behind it. Again, this is also from La La Land Crafts. It's a shoe die and you get to assemble your shoe. And then this is a pocket in the back here, right in here. That's a pocket there. And then more of the beautiful paper and then it opens like this. And then you've got some more spots for photos. And then all the way in the back here, there is a waterfall with four waterfall flaps where you can fit um, four by four photos. And then you have a spot for a photo all the way in the back and then it has a magnetic closure. So this side closes up like that. And then this side is just a little bit opposite. It's all the same elements, but just different things on, on different pages. So again, this comes out and then inserts back in. And then it folds down like this. <laughs> it's very hard to show you because it's a long folio. Um, and then it has again those pockets here. And then it folds back and you have again um, space for photos in here. And then that closes up. And then on the back of this, we have this cute section here again. Lots of space for photos. And then if we go over here, I might have just to turn it a little bit so you can see it. Again, we have the pocket here and then it opens up like this for more photos or journaling space and then more photos back here. And then in the middle section here again, you have that beautiful waterfall. So lots, lots and lots of spaces for photos in this fairly small folio. 
So I'm super excited to show you guys the tutorial. So we will get right to that and you can learn how to make this book for yourself. Okay guys, let's get started on the cover for our cute little baby girl folio. So what you're gonna need for the cover is two pieces of lightweight cardstock. So this is 65 pound weight. Um, you will need one piece that measures 12 by eight and a half and one piece that measures six by two, eight and a half. And then I've put a piece of score tape along this line here. You could definitely um, put some glue instead if you'd like. I just prefer to work with score tape. This is the 3 8 but you could use half inch. So I'm just removing it. And then I'm going to just attach my two pieces together there, just like this. And grab a bone folder and just burnish right along there. All right, so next what we're gonna do is put our chipboard pieces down. So I do have a little bit more um, cardstock than I need, but that is because I don't want, if I set it up like this, my line here would be at a really weird <laughs> place on my paper and it might break or bend when I fold it over. So I prefer to center the line on my back cover and then have my spine piece here and have this here and then I would just cut off the edges, okay? So my chipboard pieces measure four and a half by six and a half and you're gonna need two of these and this is medium weight chipboard. So four and a half by six and a half, you need two. And then your spine measures two by six and a half. <clears throat> Sorry guys, it's, <clears throat> it's early so I have a little froggy in my throat. All right, so I'm gonna start actually by gluing this piece down. And I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac glue. And I get asked all the time why I use fabric glue for paper. And it's actually a glue that's meant to adhere fabric to other things, including paper. But I just really, really love the outcome of it. You don't see any bubbling or ridges on the other side of your paper, which is especially important to me when I'm working with thinner cardstock. Um, so I'm going to try to center this piece top to bottom and leave about an inch at the top and at the bottom. And I'm going to try to mostly center it on that line that we created by attaching our two papers together. All right, so once that one is on, you can go ahead and just run your bone folder over it. So then we're gonna put glue on the back of our spine piece. So just a generous amount all over the back. And then we're going to lay it down. However, we're going to leave about an eighth of an inch of space between our spine piece and our back cover. And that is just so that our paper has somewhere to go when we fold it over. So just about that much, bring it up here, about an eighth of an inch. All right, and then we're just gonna attach our next piece of chipboard. So our next piece that's four and a half by six and a half. Just get glue all over it. And then we will attach it in the same way, about an eighth of an inch from the spine piece. Just like that. All right, and then just give that a nice press down. And you can use the bone folder for that as well. Alright, so now you're going to see that we do have 
some space on both sides here. So you're just going to take your scissors and cut off, leaving about an inch of paper here. It doesn't have to be exact, so just eyeball it. And then we'll do the other side as well. Those pieces aside for now. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our paper and fold it over onto the chipboard. So what I like to do is I don't like to just press it over and fold it because sometimes you're going to get cracking doing that. So I just like to slowly bring it up and then fold it over. And this is why you want that lighter weight cardstock because a heavier weight will probably crack. All right, so I'm just, now that I've got it folded over, now I'm using my bone folder to reinforce it. So I'm just gonna go and do that on all four sides. Right, so now that you've got it folded over on all four sides, we're going to go ahead and attach our tape. So again, I'm using 3 8 inch score tape. You can definitely use half inch for this step. So I'm going to attach the tape on all four sides of my chipboard and also on all four sides of my cardstock along the edges here, just like this. All right, so I've got my tape all attached, so I'm gonna go ahead with my bone folder and burnish all that tape down. And this just helps the tape to adhere better to my cardstock and my chipboard. All right, so the next step that we need to do is we need to cut our corners out so that they fold over nicely. So I'm going to cut straight across here like this but I'm gonna leave about an eighth, a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch of space between my chipboard and my cardstock. So visually, about that much, okay? So just a little bit between the chipboard, chipboard and the cardstock. And I'm gonna do that on all four sides. So I've cut all of those corners out. You can see it all the way around. So I'm gonna start by removing two of my short sides on my chipboard of my backing, and then one long side and one long side of my cardstock. And I'm just going to fold it over onto the chipboard. And because we've already pre-folded everything, it's going to go down really nice and smooth. Just give it a good burnish with your bone folder. And then on the other side, we will remove the other long side on the chipboard and on the cardstock. And just Fold it over, just smooth it out from the middle. And again, you can grab your bone folder and give that a good burnish. And then we'll do the sides. Just like that. Easy peasy. You just have to take all the right steps. Take your time. Don't rush it and then it's gonna to come together really, really nicely. And then we'll just put down that final side there. 
and then go around with your bone folder and just burnish it all down. All right, so the next thing we need to do is with the flat end of our bone folder, so not the tip, the flat end, just go in these little creases and just press the paper into those grooves and bring it up. And then there is our little folio cover. So the next thing we need to do is attach our spine hider piece. So this piece is going to go right in here and hide our spine. So it measures five inches wide by six and a quarter tall. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach our tape to all four sides of our, all the way around our spine hider piece and then one strip on either side of our spine and all the, through the inside of our spine. And you're going to be careful not to go completely to the top or bottom because our book measures six and a half, but our spine hider piece it measures six and a quarter. So you're not gonna go all the way to the top or bottom. Okay, so we've removed the backings from the back of our spine hider piece and from our book. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to attach our spine hider piece right on top here, making sure to center it left and right and top and bottom. All right, so just lay it down and then you can go ahead and get your bone folder and burnish, burnish, burnish. We really, really want to get this attached so that we don't get any bubbles when we fold it up all over there. All right, so once you've got that done, you can go ahead and just kind of run your bone folder over where you generally think your spine is. Do that on both sides and then just bring it up. All right, so that is our spine all nice and hidden. Okay guys, so let's get started on the um, flaps for the inside of our little folio. So the first one you're gonna need measures six and three eighths by five and a half, and you're gonna score it on the five and a half inch side. You're gonna score it half an inch and then at one and a quarter, so half and one and a quarter, and then you're going to attach your score tape to your half inch flap. So not this three quarter inch section that we created, your half inch flap, you're gonna attach your score tape to that. Okay, so now we need to put the flap that's gonna go on top of this. So this one measures six and seven eighths by four and a quarter, and it's going to get attached right up here like this. So I've got my tape already on the back here. So I've got my tape on that half inch section. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna turn it over so I can see better. And I'm just gonna snip there and then there. And that's just gonna help it look neater once I attach my powder and paper, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove just a bit of my backing, not all of it. I'm gonna bend it back, just like that. I'm gonna bend it in, and then I'm going to line up my page corner to corner, top and bottom, making sure not to go past this score line over here. Make sure it's even up here. And then once I've got it where I want it, I can go ahead and remove the rest of that backing, just like that, okay? So that is our little front flap attached. So it's going to open to the top like this. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach this panel right here on top, just like this. So what I've used for my paper for this whole book is the Hello Baby collection from La La Land Crafts. Um, super, super cute collection. It has boy papers and girl papers in it. So it can definitely work for both. And the, the boy papers, as far as I'm concerned, also work for the girl ones as well. So that is what we're using. So I've cut this panel um, four by six. So the paper is already six inches, so I just cut it down to four. And then I took the double stitch chevron die and I just placed it right where I wanted it on here and you'll see why in a minute. And I actually ran it through my die cutting machine just like that and then this comes out and then from the die you get this shape but then it also leaves this in here and because the die is double stitched you see that beautiful stitching all the way around so we're going to attach it right here on the top of our panel here but we are only going to use glue around the edges of our paper so we're going to use some glue i'm using some arc glitter glue here you're going to be very careful to only do your edges because um, we want to be able to use that as a pocket, okay? So it's going to get attached just like this. And don't worry if you make a mess with that glue, it, uh, it dries clear. So you're going to attach it just like that, just scooch it over a bit. All right, so just make sure it's all nice and neat. And if you do get any glue that you don't like, you can always use a glue eraser. I just got mine from the dollar store. All right, so now we've got that attached on top of there. So now we're gonna make a cute little insert to go inside that pocket. So I've used our camera die here from La Land Crafts again. So that's the camera die. And it also comes with this circle that's meant to be the lens and then this cute little heart die. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some more glue on the back of my circle just like this, only on half of it, okay? Only half of it. And I'm going to make sure to put it on there nice and straight. And we're just going to glue it right to the center there. And then we're just going to add the little heart. Just as a cute little accent on the top. And then we can use that as a cute little pocket. And it will come down over top of it. Super, super sweet, right? Now that we've added our cute little insert. Let's open it so we can add our magnetic closure. So I'm just using some magnets here. They're from Basic Gray and they're super, super thin, really, really thin. And they are already adhesive backed. So I'm just taking the adhesive off both sides and then I am going to just put it down on the top there. And then I'm going to close it, making sure it's nice and straight when I close it. Give it a good press, and then that closes up our little pocket, okay? So now we are going to take this flap and fold it over to the back. Flip it over to the back. On this back side here, we're going to attach a flap right here. So this flap measures six and seven eighths by three and three quarters. On the six and seven eighths side here, you're gonna score it half an inch right there just to give us our flap. And again, we're gonna go ahead and trim those edges off just like that. It just makes it look cleaner under the pattern paper. So again, we're gonna just remove a tiny bit of our backing. I'm gonna line it up at the bottom where I want it, centering it left to right. And then I'll put it down up here, remove the rest of my tape, and give that a good press. And since we're in magnet mode, let's go ahead and 
close it up with a magnet as well. So if you don't have magnets, you could use Velcro um, or any other little closures you know of. I just really like the magnets because they're simple and they just help my books to look really nice and um, professional. So I'm going to put that again right there and close it over and down just like that. Here I've got the horizontal pocket die. So this one is fairly new. So I've just cut it out of some black cardstock and we're going to attach it right to the bottom here. But what I've also done is I've cut it again on this the same die, I use the exact same die and cut it again. So it's this one right here. It's this die right here. And so I've cut it twice, once out of the black and once out of the uh, pattern paper from the collection. And then I simply went and cut off these side flaps. And then I just cut a little bit more off so that it could um, give it a nice black frame in here. And I'll be doing this later with the other pocket die so I'll, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and attach this down right to the bottom. So I'm just again using that art glitter glue all over my flaps here. And then I'm just gonna carefully close it down and attach it right to the bottom of that flap. And you wanna be sure not to go over so it's a good idea to pick it up all right so then once you have it down you can go ahead and give it a good press down all over just like that And there we go, now you have a cute little pocket attached to the bottom of that. And then we can attach our little layer right on top. Again, making sure to center it in there nicely, just like that. All right, so that is one of our flaps completed. So now we're going to work on the next one. So our next flap measures six and three eighths by five and a quarter. And this time you're going to score it half an inch and then at one. So you get that one inch or half inch section to connect it to your book and then that half inch gusset. So again, I've attached my tape there and I'm just going to snip those edges and then fold them down just like that all right so on top of this flap we are going to attach another one that measures four and five eighths by five and five eighths and on the four and five eighths side here you're going to score it half an inch just like that and again I've attached my tape and we can go ahead and snip those corners. All right, so this is going to get attached right on top of here, just nice and centered, because it's not as large as our flap underneath it. So again, I've peeled back a bit of my tape and I am going to just line it up, line it up at the top, because it doesn't go the full length of our flap that's underneath. So you are gonna wanna line it up at the top. And just make sure you're centering it left to right. And don't go over your score line. So now we're just gonna remove that adhesive or the tape backing. And again, we are going to add a magnet to close it up 
So just snap those magnets together, peel off your backing, and place it down. As far as you can get it from the edge, the better. That way we can get our pattern paper on top without any issues. And then just press it down. All right. So now we're going to attach a pocket on top of this. But this time we've used the vertical pocket die right here. And I've cut it twice from the black cardstock. And I've also cut it twice from my pattern paper, okay? And I want them to be the same um, color so it looks more uniform, the same pattern. So what we're gonna do is we've cut it twice. Off of one of them, we're gonna cut off the center um, flap. So this one here, we're gonna cut it off. I'm gonna turn it upside down just so I can Follow that line a little bit better. So just off of one, you're gonna wanna cut that flap off. So off of this one, we cut this side. And then we're going to attach them together just like this. So it'll actually be the hinge that hinges it together. So we're gonna just go ahead, line them up nice and neatly on top of each other, making sure to match the edges top and bottom as well as you can. All right, and then once you have that done, you can go ahead and bend in your score lines just like so, all the way around. And I'm actually gonna use my bone folder because I want them to be Super, super nice and crisp. So just all the way around, burnish them in, just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and add, again, the art glitter glue. And I've designed the flap that we just did, this one, to fit this pocket perfectly. Therefore, it's going to fit all the way to the bottom and all the way left to right. So just put it down in one corner and line it up and then it should fall right down where we need it to go. Just like that. So again, you can give it a good press down, open it up. Make sure none of that glue came out the bottom. And then you can go around with the bone folder. Just like that. So now that creates one large pocket that looks like two. So I think that's kind of fun. All right, now for the layers on top of this one. So I've already cut one exactly the way I showed you how before, but I'm gonna show you how to do it on this pocket here. So you're gonna wanna grab your scissors and, oops, sorry. I have my favorite scissors I wanna use for this. So you can see the lines. It might be a little bit hard to see on, on the camera, but I can see the lines. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna just go around and cut those flaps off first all three of them all the way around. Just like that. And then off the bottom, I'm gonna trim about a quarter of an inch. And then off each side, I'm gonna trim about an eighth of an inch. It does not have to be super, super specific. You basically just want a black border around it just like that okay so now we're gonna go ahead and attach both of these pieces on top just like so really nice and try to keep it straight and then also 
over here. Just like so. All right, so that is our little pockets decorated. Okay, so now we're going to take it and put it in this position because that's the position it's gonna be in our folio. And we're gonna turn it over to the back just like this. So on the back here, we have another cute little element. So we're gonna have this coming down from the top and then this coming from the bottom. So for this flap here, I cut it at four and a half, or sorry, five and a half by four and a quarter. And then on the five and a half inch side, I scored at half an inch. And then I took this die from one of our stitched hills. I think it's stitched hills die, but it's gonna be linked below so you can get the exact name. So I used this one and I basically, not basically, I just put it in my die cutting machine just like this. So say if I was showing you on this piece, I literally just took it, put it right on there, just like this, and I put it through my die cutting machine, okay? And then that gives you this cute shape here. And again, since it's double stitched, make sure you can see it, um, it gives you that beautiful shape on both sides. So again, this one measures five and a half by four and a quarter, and then I scored it on the half inch side, and then I just took my die, put it on there, ran it through the machine, brought it out, and that's what it, that's what it looks like, okay? So again, I'm gonna grab my scissors, trim off these sides, just like that, and I'm gonna attach it to the top here. And I'm going to just fold back again, line it up in the corner, making sure not to go past my score line. Just like so. And then I'll take the rest of that tape off. Give it a good press down. So I am shaking the table here. And then for the bottom, I have a flap that measures four and a half by four and a quarter. And on the four and a half inch side, you're gonna score it half an inch. And we're gonna trim those corners. If you wanted to, you could sit down and do all of your um, flaps and score them and trim all your corners and then you would just have to put it together. That's a great way to do it as well. So again, I've just removed a bit of that backing and I am just lining it up here almost all the way to my score line and then just let it rest down there and remove the rest of that backing. All right, and then you kind of know what's coming. I'm gonna add a magnet to close it up. This book is going to be a gift for one of our very dear friends who just had a baby girl. So I wanted it to be extra, extra special. So I'm using my whole store of magnets, apparently. Sometimes those are buggers to peel. So I'm gonna put it right in the center here and then I'm just gonna fold it over just like that to close it up, all right? So the last flap we're gonna work on is actually gonna go on the inside back of our book. So for this one, you need a piece that measures six and three quarters by four and a quarter and you're going to score it on the six and three quarter side at half an inch. And again, just put your tape on. So I'm gonna snip my edges there. All right, and then I've got four pieces that measure four and a quarter by four and three quarters. And you're gonna score on the half, on the four and three quarter inside at half an inch on all four. So four pieces at four and a quarter by four and three quarters, and then on the four and three quarter side, you're gonna score it half an inch. Attach your tape. Do not snip the edges on these, okay? Because they will be showing. 
All right, so you need four of them. So you can go ahead and bend down your score lines and give it a good press with your bone folder. All right, so then right on the top here, we're gonna attach our first flap. So we've got this flap here. So on the top, we're gonna attach that one. And we're just gonna peel it back a little bit again. And you're gonna line it up with that score at the top as best as you can. And once you have it where you want it, you can go ahead and peel that back just like that. And then we're going to attach the other one the exact same way, but we're going to attach this one right below the line from this one here. So you're going to attach it right there. Maybe turn it to the side if that's easier for you. It might be for me. And once you have it right where you want it, you can go ahead and remove the rest of that backing. All right, so we've got them all attached. So now we just need to go through and burnish them down nicely, just like this. All right, so now we've got all of our flaps put together. So now we're going to bring in our book and attach them into the book. So as you can see, the right hand side of my book is already finished because it's the exact same thing. I'm just gonna show you a few things about it. So our book is going to be like this. That is how it's going to open. It's gonna open like this, all right? So in this case, I put my pockets as the very top thing and I've done my magnetic closure and then it opens up like this and I've done this section on the back of this flap. It's not fully finished yet and then I've put my camera on the half inch flap instead of that three quarter inch one that I put it on the other side. So it opens down like this and then I've got the little pocket flap down here and it opens in this direction and then it opens to the back and then the section that we're about to attach is this little waterfall section that goes all the way in the back of the book and it also has a magnetic closure which I will teach you to do right away. So closing that up we're going to start by in this case on this side we're going to attach the flap that has the camera on top and it's going to get i'm going to turn the book to the side just so it's easier for me to attach it but so this is the one that has our three quarter inch gusset it is going to get attached to the book right there like this okay so what i'm going to do is i'm again going to take a tiny section off just like this and I'm going to nestle it into the corner here so these two corners and against this edge leaving an even border all the way around because there's a little bit of space it's not the full length of the book so just nestle it into that corner and don't press down over here until you've kind of got it attached where you want it where, or laid down where you want it and you can go ahead and lay this gusset down so that you are able to see where your half inch is. So as you can see, this is how it normally would be. I have it folded down like this. So just nestle it in there. If you have it where you want it, you can press down over here and remove the rest of that backing and then you can press it down, open it up, and use your bone folder again to press that down. Now we're going to attach our pocket flap over here, just like this, okay? So we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna turn the book, turn the book however you need to to be able to see it best. 
So again, I'm pressing down that half inch gusset so that I'm able to work with my half inch flat back here. I'm going to put, remove a bit of my tape and again, I'm gonna nestle it, but I'm going to be super careful not to go over my spine there. So just get it right in there where you want it before you do anything else, before you press it down anywhere. So that looks pretty good to me. So I'm gonna press down over here and rip off my tape. That's okay, I'll grab it from here. All right, and then just put it down right there. You can open it up and press it down in here. Okay, just like this. All right, so now we've got that section on and that's gonna fold down and this section's gonna fold it over, fold over it, right? So on the inside here is where our waterfall's gonna go. So the waterfall is gonna attach, same kind of thing, about a 16th of an inch down from the top. So you can go ahead and remove a bit of that backing, just like this. Put it where you want it. And it's probably a good idea to line up the top of this with these, with the edges of your previous flaps. I'll probably get it in there right where you need it to be. Then again, once you have it lined up in there, you can press down here and remove the rest of that backing just like that. So then again, this is the, in, the all the way at the back. This folds over and this folds over like this, all right? So now to close up this here, we are actually gonna use a little closure strip here and this measures five and a half by two inches. And again, I've scored on the five and a half inch side, I've scored it half an inch and I'm gonna remove my backing. There's no need to trim these corners and I'm going to attach it centered on my back panel all the way to the bottom. Just like this, just try to make sure it's nice and straight and then remove that backing and you can open it up, and give it a good press down and it's gonna come over like this. So we are again gonna add that magnetic closure actually out of my super tiny magnets. So I'm gonna use some bigger ones, but they're gonna work just as well. So I'm going to add it right there about and then remove it. I would use the smaller ones in this case if I had an option but I don't, so that's fine. And then that'll close that up quite tightly. All right, so now I am just going to add all of the papers to the book.
right, so I've finished covering all the insides of my book with my pattern paper. I still might add a few things, but you'll see that in the finished walkthrough. So now I wanna work on my closure. And for my closure, I'm just going to use seam binding. So that's just this stuff here. Um, you could use any ribbon. I'm just attaching a little bit of my score tape kind of sort of centered on here and then I'm going to take my seam binding and I'm going to just attach it right there and then I'm going to go to the back of my book and get another little piece of seam binding and I'm going to try to kind of bring this up so it's kind of in the same general spot. Doesn't have to be super perfect. All right, and then we're just gonna cut off some seam binding here and then use the other end of our seam binding. This one is super wrinkly, so make sure you straighten it out if yours is as well. And just attach it there, just like that. And then you can cut off any little extra pieces. So then just kind of bring it up, cut it in half, and then tie it in a pretty bow. And that is what's going to keep our cute little album closed. Just like that. Super cute. I probably won't even cut any of that off. All right. So trying to make sure I know where the front of my book is here. Um, yeah, so this is the top. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna show you guys kind of what I'm gonna do, but you're gonna see it in the finished walkthrough. These pieces are gonna layer on here, so I've just got a, a piece of white, and then some of my pattern paper that I distressed, just like that. And then, I've got one of our long flags dies, and I think it might go like that. And then I've used one of the octagon dies from a past club kit. I think it might have been February, so I will link to the kit. And that's gonna go there. And then my cute little baby is gonna go there. I colored her up with Copic markers. Hopefully you can see her well enough. So she's gonna go there and then I've cut out the welcome baby die. And that's probably gonna go right there. And I might add a few other things there but you guys will see that in the finished walkthrough. So I'm gonna cover the back still and the spine with my pattern paper but again, you'll see that all um, in the finished walkthrough. All right guys. So you'll probably see all of that before you start watching the video. So that'll be perfect. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. All the links for the things I used will be linked below, the dies, the uh, stamps, the paper, all that kind of stuff to the Lala Landcraft store. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys next time. If you haven't yet, please give me a like and subscribe. I always appreciate that. Thanks, bye-bye.